Hello and welcome to this short video about some tips on how to work on your goals and your dreams and do the important stuff when you have no time. I've prepared four tips for this particular video. There are obviously more, but these four I have been using for the last couple of years. So I hope that you will find some of them helpful. My name is Marina. I am the author of Resourceful Mom, Take the First Step to the Life You Love. I am an owner and founder of Resourceful Counseling, so I'm a qualified counselor and psychotherapist. I'm also a mom to two children. My son is four and my daughter is three. And I also work with children with autism and disabilities. So life's still pretty busy for me. Now let's just get into, into the tips. Tip number one, I've actually kept this one from the times when my children were very young and when I was writing Resourceful Mom and I really had to get really creative with my time back then because I didn't have any. So tip number one is never underestimate how much can be done in five minutes. Sometimes we think that five minutes or even ten minutes is not enough time to get um, get your project started so you just you know we end up not doing it because we are waiting for a longer period of time to really sit down and get into it needless to say that um, that time normally never comes or we end up wasting six months or wasting a year or even longer than that and you know then being disappointed with ourselves for not starting on our dream so I've learned I could do a lot in five minutes. For example, when I was writing Resourceful Mom, uh, when I was writing Resourceful Mom, I was using every minute to do it. So say in the morning when I was preparing breakfast for the children, you know, like making, cooking the porridge, and um, an idea popped into my head, or I was just thinking about the chapter I was working on, I would then record it. Or if I was out in the park, pushing the push chair, or playing on the floor with the kids, you know, I would record that idea. But obviously, I didn't get my pen and paper out or my laptop out to do it, because first of all, the kids wouldn't let me. They would either want to use the pen to scribble stuff down or crawl all over it, all over the laptop, or want to attempt to type. So I couldn't get the equipment out. So what I did, was I recorded myself on uh, my phone. So there is that audio application that I guess all of us have these days because technology is just amazing and you know we can take advantage of it. And my phone was normally you know in a very close proximity to me because it, it, it just was with all the stuff we look at these days. So I used to record my ideas, just to talk. I would just speak to my phone and save it. And you know, not all of it was good, lots of it was rubbish, but it got my creative juices flowing and I had material to work with. And as you know, the more you think about your ideas, the more you develop them, the more stuff comes because then you kind of open in that passage to, you know, to your imagination and your creativity. So that really worked. I've also tried doing a video diary as well, but I found that um, I got distracted by by my own face like when I was looking at myself I couldn't just speak what was on my mind I felt like I had to be better than I was and it was just a lot of psychological stuff going on I think so audio worked better for me when I couldn't see myself I was just speaking to my phone basically so that was the main thing and at the, by the end of the week I found out like I had lots of material to work with so five if you think five minutes over five days is 25 minutes and 25 minutes in my world is a lot of time and that's how resourceful mom was born from these little chunks of time and you don't sometimes don't even need five minutes you can use less time but um i don't know if you um, if you write blogs you can think of a blog title in five minutes or if you want to get um, into meditating you can do a meditation within five minutes or write a gratitude list 
or if you um, are learning something new, say if you're learning a new language, how many words can you learn in five minutes? You could be, even if it's just one, then you know it's still one word, one word more than you knew before. So over five days, it will be five words, or seven days, it will be seven words. So thinking about time in these terms really helps me. It's not uh, about looking at this five minute chunk of time, it's looking at it over a period of time and how much you can do in that time. And I had lit I had no time back then. So, you know, I didn't have much to spare. And I, I really wanted to go for my goals and go for my dreams. So I made that choice to get creative with it. And tip number two, that brings me nicely to tip number two is get creative with your resources. And I've already said about using the audio application on your phone or using a video diary if it works for you. Also, um, I used, so when I recorded audio recorded my ideas, I used the uh, speech to text, I think it's called. You can find it on the internet. So basically you put this program on, on I put it on my laptop and then I pressed play of the audio recording that I've done and my laptop converted, the program converted what I've said into text. And yes, I had to go back and edit it, but it was less time consuming than, you know, I spent less time doing editing than I would have spent putting ideas on paper. Because when, when you speak, they flow better. And again, it could be done for anything. If you write posts on social media, if you write blogs, if you want to write a book or an article for a magazine, this is a great way to get your ideas flowing. Or just use any time if your children are older and you can get a pen and paper out or a laptop out. Use it. Use those five, ten minutes every day to get yourself ahead, to get yourself to where you want to go. Because if you think in a month's time, that adds up to a huge amount of time that could have been wasted on just sitting there and thinking how little time you have. So get creative with your resources. And also, I used to use any downtime as well. What I mean by that was, say if I went on a train or a bus, now I know now like we don't really go to many places, but I would use that time to listen to inspirational videos or to listen to an online course that I was doing at the time. Or when I went to the hairdressers, I used to use that time to study or the doctor's office. And those times will come back. I believe that they will. I know now it's tough and we don't get out of the house much. So we have to do with what, you know, what we've got. But in a, in a couple of months time, hopefully, you know, if, if you're somewhere waiting on your child to come out from, I don't know, an activity that they're at, then you can still use the time to listen to some important bits. And I spend time on listening to inspirational videos or doing or spend time on the membership and listening to stuff while I am even walking somewhere or I'm in a car putting, putting something useful on. So don't waste that time. But obviously take time to relax as well. It's not all about just doing, 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 doing something productive because relaxing is also productive. So be very mindful of that and give yourself time to just chill and not think about anything. And that's important as well. My tip number three is, um, plan for the longer chunks of time that you know that you'll have free. So say you know that this Saturday or this Sunday you will have an hour or two hours when you can just focus on you, on your business. Make sure you plan for that time. Make sure that you have all of your notes there. Make sure you have all of your recordings there or your ideas there. Like if you write them on small pieces of paper or in your diary anywhere, make sure you have it all there. So when you are sitting down to work, you use that hour productively and you don't waste it on thinking, oh, what shall I do now? So you really utilize that time and make it productive for yourself. And that's what I used to do. And my situation's changed now because my children go to their dad every other weekend. So I have more time now. You know, if I'm not at work especially, then I have that time. But I still need to plan for it because I can easily waste a day now. And that was just unheard of a couple of years ago. I would never waste a day. Oh, well, I didn't have a day to waste back then. Anyway, I really have to plan now even more. The more time I have on my hands, I feel like the better I need to plan it really. So I plan. And I think this is important 
to plan that time. And tip number four, it's not for everyone and it might even be called controversial. So, you know, it works for me, but you need to be mindful of how you work, how your mind works, because, you know, it's, yeah, it's be over ambitious with your deadlines. So I find, for example, if there is a project that I'm working on, and I know that realistically it's going to take about six months for me to finish. I give myself three months to do it because I find that I will take as much time as I'm given to do a project. So if I'm given two weeks, I'll do it in two weeks. If I'm given two days, I'll do it in two days. So I've decided to put a little bit of pressure on myself so that I am as productive as I possibly can be. So say if I give myself three months to finish a big project, I know that I will be using um, my time wisely and every day I will do something, even a little bit, like 10, 15 minutes of work towards that project. And nine times out of 10, I don't hit my target within them three months. And that's where I said, be mindful of your reactions because that could be very disheartening for some people. For me, it's not disheartening because I look at it in a different way. I look at it in a way that by giving myself three months instead of six, I get myself that much further down the line that I would have had I given myself six months. Because if I had six months, I would probably have skipped so many days and not done it. Not because I didn't have time, but because I know that I still have six months to do it. So I would relax a bit more. But when I have three months, I know, okay, I'll need to make sure that I don't waste too much time or that I need to do something every day, even if it's like writing two words down as much as that, you know. So that's where it's a bit controversial. You have to know yourself pretty well. And I know myself pretty well now. So I know that if I don't hit that target, which I don't hit that target nine times out of ten, but I know that I am further down the line to my goal than I would have been. So you must really know yourself to to do that tip number four. So that's the four tips that I use regularly for myself and that's how I wrote Resourceful Mum. Um, I gave myself three months to do it. I've done it in four. So, you know, um, I mean, it took about six months from the beginning to the end, like for it to get published, but I did the writing in four months. And I wanted to do it in three. But I knew, I knew realistically I wouldn't be able to. But by giving myself three months, I worked on it every day. I was talking to my phone every day. So, um, yeah, I just had to get very creative. And I believe that it works. Well, like, if it works for you personally, then it will work and you'll see progress. Let me just quickly sum the tips up. So number one, never underestimate the power, um, never underestimate how much can be done in five minutes. Number two, get creative with your resources. Number three, plan for longer chunks of free time so you don't waste it. And number four, be over ambitious with your deadlines. But that, again, is not for everyone. It's just for those who are not going to get disheartened if they don't hit their target in that time. Okay, I hope you found some of them helpful. And uh, let me know how you get on. Thank you for watching.